not do that again. Welcome, welcome. Uh, of course, before we start, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we live, create and learn on today, paying respects to others past, present and emerging. Goodness me, what a start. Hello, Jeremy. How are you doing today? Good, thanks. How are you? <laughs> Good. Um, back as host, surprise, surprise, there has been yet another disturbance in the force, um, as I said, but can't be too bad when we're doing illustration with you, Jeremy Lord. Um, also want to say a massive hello to everyone in the chat. We've got Gareth and Flynn so far. Um, if you're tuning on Behance, fantastic. Um, but if you're tuning in to, on YouTube or anywhere else, uh, pop on over to Behance to ask your questions and participate in the live chat. Now, this is part two. We had part one earlier this week. Do you want to do a bit of a recap? for us. I do, yeah. Um, so basically what we kind of started talking about on Tuesday um, was kind of looking at your basic kind of process of, of digital drawing. Um, we looked at some inspiration and reference. We looked at the difference between the two. Um, we did some basic sketches, um, some of them very basic as we had some a couple of issues and I had to do a few of them with the mouse, which was very mm -hmm. rustic. Um, and yeah, and then today we're going to kind of jump into um, cleaning up some of those kind of sketches and um, adding color and a few kind of little bits of detail. So yeah, it should be fun. Fantastic. And I've just popped up those initial thumbnail sketches here on the screen as well for everyone to see. Um, I'm very excited about the next step. I learned so much in the previous stream of just how to generate um, characters and ideas when you've got a little bit of art block uh, or just to try try something new. So I'll keep quiet uh, for the time being now and pop on some music um, and let you uh, run the show, Jeremy. So take it away. Let's get started. Good. Thanks. Um, all right. So yeah, so just to recap again, um, what we kind of did um, on Tuesday was to kind of go through these sketches and, and show you guys different ways of of creating sketches to kind of, you know, give yourself a brief or kind of go over this, um, this art block, if, if you have art block, which is a pretty common thing to have, um, different ways to kind of, you know, maybe not break through it, but maybe just kind of go around it or kind of find a back door to it. Um, so we had these sketches, um, we had this kind of sheet here looking at reference versus inspiration and how do you use two, the two of them. Um, basic kind of the short and sweet of this is inspiration is what comes first. It's the thing that gives you the idea. And then once you have that idea, you can look at reference, um, but it's not necessarily kind of a hard and fast rule. So these two things can kind of swap around. And then based on that, we looked at um, modeling us like a little robot here for, you know, kind of getting that Star Wars kind of space feel um, off of a Japanese rice cooker, um, because kind of why not? Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good way to, again, kind of if you're stuck for inspiration or not necessarily if you're even stuck for inspiration, but if you want to do something different to what you'd normally do, kind of break the mold a little bit. Um, it's a good way to kind of do this, you know, like take any kind of appliance. We spoke about this on Tuesday. Um, and try and kind of see like how can I make a spaceship out of a you know a blender or something, um, or even like a toothbrush. Who knows? But um, yeah, I I went for a Japanese rice cooker, and I went specifically for this Japanese rice cooker because it already had kind of little like robot features because mm -hmm. you know trust the Japanese to make everything kind of cute and and a little bit kind of humanized. Um, so yeah, so we kind of ended up with these. So these little sketches that you see here. Um, are literally just, you know, a few kind of choice cuts from um, this kind of messy page mm -hmm. and then kind of just going over them. I popped them on a, on a background layer. You can see that my opacity here has been set a little bit lower. Um, and then I'm just going over them with a, a kind of a more solid, more clean outline to, to make up the shapes here. And, and the, the idea here is obviously like you want to stick to what you put down because the whole point of these kind of sketches, these these you know, these rough sketches here, they're, they're rough for a reason and they're things that you might not necessarily do. So if you're going to go and then kind of clean these up um, and take away all the kind of character of them, kind of defeats the purpose um, out of that. But at the same time, we need to give them a little bit of definition, right? Because they're very messy and very um, kind of rough. So we need to kind of give them a little bit more structure, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but all the while kind of trying to stick to what we put down. So as you can see, I've gotten a few kind of different 
um, robots on top of these. So you can see like this one, for instance, has like it already had kind of like a window and I thought like, oh, that looks like it might be a jet engine and like two couple of antennas. So I've just elaborated on that a little bit and give it a little bit more structure. Um, this one was based completely off of this little rice cooker, uh, made another one there. And then, yeah, basically just kind of going in uh, and we can do this, you know, for, for quite a while, kind of thinking about how do we create these little robots? Um, this guy looks like he's got these two little kind of fan turbine mm -hmm. things here. Yeah. And like, again, I've got reference for that down here. So if I'm kind of stuck of how that looks, I can, be, you know, go back to my reference um, and go, all right, cool. This guy is going to have these little kind of things coming out of that and maybe not even that much. And they're just kind of angled. So he's, you know, he's a kind of a, a floaty guy. He's a floaty bot. That's what <laughs> we'll call him. Um, and yeah, and like kind of, you know, looking at that reference and seeing how this can kind of work again like i'm being pretty rough at this stage um but still getting a kind of a good idea of how all this can come together mm. and doing these kind of parts of kind of robotic kind basically of you know and... prototyping um and testing out different features and i'm sure if you you start creating you know these uh fan blades i suppose on this one you might think oh well wait what would that look like on one of the other sketches and then maybe yeah. actually that becomes a completely new one um again so it's it's a really good process of developing um you know the visual language of the character that you're creating and also just to to improve your visual uh lexicon for for future work as well absolutely yeah. visual lexicon i like that i'm gonna use that <laughs> um yeah that's basically it like if i like you know like hey i really like these maybe i can take them from here and stick them on this guy and see mm -hmm. how that goes so i mean I'm, we're not going to do this because we could be here for ages just making a whole bunch of different robots um so i think like i'm gonna kind of try and work from either this one or that one and i'm gonna try and push it a little bit further and see how we go with this and maybe add some color um this one is a little bit more true to the brief that we set ourselves. We're kind mm -hmm. of making, you know, using this rice cooker as a reference. Um, but I also feel like this one's got potential to, to be really cool and kind of work with in an interesting way. So um, at this stage, I might sort of think if I was doing this um, with a like kind of more kind of stretched out time frame, I guess I'd do both. Um, but for the purposes of this, we said we were going to do a rice cooker. So let's go with this little guy. Um, so I'm going to grab this guy and just duplicate it. So Command or Control J once I'm on that layer. And then I can turn off my other layers. And I'm going to make this guy a little bit bigger. And he's going to get all kind of stretched out and maybe mm, pixelated, a little bit kind yeah. of horrible and pixelated because I worked <laughs> at, a, at a lower res. But that's all right. He's just going to be another kind of reference layer for me to work from and start sort of cleaning it up and seeing how we go. So at this stage, now it's just kind of going into the, the kind of inking process. So a uh, bunch of different ways to do that. I just use a very basic brush here. I use the basic round brush um, that I've created. I'm using a Wacom um, stylus. Um, so I've got this kind of pressure sensitivity here, which nice. gives me this you know thick and thin. Um, I'm not using the, the soft brush, so I'm not getting the, the opacity um, variant as well. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing this thing. It's, that's important if you're doing inking. When you're doing sketching, you can definitely kind of mess around with that and see how you go. Um, but when you're doing this kind of sketch, this inking stuff, you want potentially to have, you know, nice black, clean, solid opacity outlines. Um, so let's go. Let's get into this guy and that's start kind of cleaning them up. And while you uh, start getting into it, we have already our first question. Uh, and I just want to uh, let everyone else know that if you have any questions about what we're doing uh, right this second or about Jeremy's uh, workflow or just illustration work in general, um, pop them in the chat and Flynn will pass them on to me. Um, and uh, I will ask them to Jeremy and we'll do our best to, to answer them. But our first question here is um, from Mervyn. I'm a graphic designer and more interested to focus on illustrations. Any tips on how to improve my digital drawings? Um, yeah, so that's a 
good question. Um, there's a lot of kind of different ways to do this. And as I'm sure you're aware with your graphic kind of design experience, mm. there's a, many, many ways to do the same thing um, and trying to find the way that kind of suits you best is kind of part of the challenge as well. Um, not just kind of skilling up, but essentially what I would say, if you're kind of looking to do this, it's it's no different to your your standard kind of analog drawing, if you will. Um, and by that, I mean, just kind of like pencil and paper. The, the skills that are used in using kind of digital and Photoshop, and I think that's one of the strengths of programs like Photoshop is it's still very akin to you know your standard kind of drawing so a lot of those skills carry over and are probably required in order for your digital art to kind of shine as well and kind of work in that way so um i think basically just kind of lots and lots of practice mm. um, lots of sketching try and kind of work to a theme if you can um, give yourself a brief that's what we're kind of all kind of talking about um, today and um i think like practice is fine but it can also be detrimental if you're just if you're just drawing for the sake of drawing and there's no um real kind of idea behind it or there's no real brief behind it you a will lose a bit of motivation mm. um and b it's kind of just like you're just doing the going through this process but things might not kind of stick to you in your brain in that way so um you know, give yourself a challenge of like, you know, do do a drawing a day for a week, but do them in a theme. So like do, you know, um, one, a character from your favorite, like 90s anime or something. Well, that's what I would do. <laughs> um, and, and you can trace as well. You can copy these kind of things. Obviously, like copying is a big no, no, if you're going to present that as your own work, but mm. copying somebody else's work is and can be incredibly valuable if you're just trying to learn and, and like you said joanna like trying to get that kind of lexicon going in your brain doing the thing inscribes that kind of visual language into your brain and helps you kind of memorize it so um yeah don't shy away from that kind of stuff and kind of copying other people's work and, and taking reference um but yeah other than that it really is kind of just practice, 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 um, but practice like smartly, I guess, work, mm. work smart, not hard, if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. And, and I think deliberate practice. So if it's like, what is the end goal of the piece that you're making? Like it could be sketching just for fun and, you know, you can draw really whatever you like. Um, or is it, you know, producing something for your portfolio or is it improving a specific set of skills within illustration for example and yeah. and that's also where i think using uh like doing master studies of of other people's work um for learning or even the the similar approach that um the dale bajeni introduced to us uh, a couple streams ago where he would use the basically use let me put it this way, um, create a skeleton of a previously designed character and then just use that pose, essentially. So um, yeah. the pose had sort of the, the right proportions and the right amount of life that he wanted in, in his character. Um, so he, you know, he took the skeleton and then put his own body on it, um, so to speak, uh, which is somewhat of a morbid way of explaining it, but also <laughs> just another way to learn. Um, because you're you're having to figure out how your hand can move the pen to make the lines, um, mm. and it's not like you're going to be creating the exact same character um, for the less, rest of your sort of uh, career. But those lines, you know, inform the next line and the next line. Um, yep. So that's that's also a great way uh, as well. But uh, keep the questions coming, everyone. Um, we are excited to answer them. Um, so yeah, so again, I'm just like, you know, adding kind of detail to this. Um, I'm not too concerned at this stage, again, about soon being super clean. Again, it depends on, you know, what you might be trying to do with this. Um, if I'm seeing things that aren't necessarily working as well, I can like just roughly grab these 
and like that might need to be at a little bit more of an angle to kind of mm. get that symmetry going. Um, so that's just me kind of making a rough selection around it and then moving the the um, the anchor point, I guess, rotating point, the hinge. Anchor point sounds about right, anchor I point. think. Yeah, let's call it an anchor <laughs> point. Um, and then, yeah, getting that kind of thing to look a little bit more symmetrical with the other one. Um, I can also jump into my liquify. I use liquify a lot whenever I'm sketching, mm. um, sometimes when I'm inking too. So this this little guy here, he's looking a little bit too kind of potato-y. So I need to kind of fix that. Um, and, you know, like you could be just like not lazy and just redraw it. But sometimes that's easier said than done on these kind of shapes. And maybe you've got the shape just right. And so using the liquify tool to kind of get that right without necessarily having to redraw the whole thing just you know giving like if you're drawing a big strong kind of muscly person like you want to keep that in there but you want to kind of change it or add some um, and so that's a good way to kind of to do that really um and what i might do as well i quite like the the little leg so in my original sketch they're just kind of little things here but I'm thinking I might do these kind of like spidery legs kind of thing, like little Ooh. bits that come out. So what I could do here is one of two things. I could try and just go straight up and just do them in here like this and see how that goes and like ink them up. But because I've got a sketch underneath where I can, you know, play around and, and not be too kind of concerned about where this might go wrong or not, I can just do that on that layer and see how we go. And so that's probably going to be a little bit better for me at this stage. So I can just kind of, you know, experiment with, is it these kind of tiny little spidery legs? Um, and then I obviously have to do one on the other side, which would go about here. Um, it also helps if you want, if you're kind of struggling with the perspective, you can give yourself a little bit of a perspective grid like this mm -hmm. to kind of see, you know, like how's this guy sitting? Um, where's, where's everything going? And that'll kind of tell you um, where this could, would potentially go. I want to do something a little bit kind of bigger here. I want to do legs that are going to be a little bit kind of chunkier. Um, so again, I could go in and kind of do all this reference um, work. I haven't done it now, so we could be spending a long time trying to get that. So I'm just going to try and, and wing it from stuff that I've seen before and try and get this idea of like a leg, but then there's like a big kind of shield mm. thing and then that goes into the body there and it's just kind of like folds back into this gap that we've kind of created for it so let me erase this stuff very cool and i'm i have to admit i am somewhat blown away just by the idea of you already have your under sketch layer and instead of i mean it's gonna save me so many extra layers because what i would have done is sort of okay i've committed now to doing like the next layer the next stage so i'm going to do all that experimentation on now the the darker line layer but what is actually a lot smarter uh, in my opinion anyway is just to go back to the lower layer um and i've just never connected the two uh until now so that's yeah that that's the main takeaway from me that's a great tip it's Could yeah again me a like, lot of time you know this isn't a hard and fast rule. Nothing about this is, is hard and fast. And it's very much just like, do, do what you think works for you kind of thing. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, work smarter, not harder. Um, and trying to kind of like perpetually do this on the layer that I'm already sketching on for me, doesn't necessarily make as much sense. So mm. it's probably better to kind of work from that. And because I want this again, like I want these legs to, you know, like they, they need to be a shape that had kind of like fit into this kind of hole that I've created here, mm -hmm. because they will kind of like fold back in, like, let's say, you know, like maybe he's a scaredy little robot and he needs oh. to have like a little kind of like defense mechanism and he doesn't have weapons or anything because he's just a cute little rice cooker. Um, and so if something comes along that scares him, he can just kind of pull his legs back in and and he won't lose a leg that is fantastic and also you know things like that are a great way to incorporate uh story and sort of purpose to your design as well 
uh, yeah. which kind of is one of the things I think that brings your work to the next level is when each element of the character, you know, has very much a purpose and um, support, supports the story um, or like the actual character of the character that you're creating. Yeah, I think that's especially when you're doing these kind of little robots, like they need they need to look like they function, right? Like they mm. need to look like they're going to work a certain way and like things are going to happen. So obviously I've inspired myself off this rice cooker and this big lid here is either going to be kind of like a glass bit for a cockpit. I haven't decided that yet, um, but it you know, it needs to kind of work that way. I've kind of used this handle here. Whoops, I'm on the wrong layer. Um, this handle here to make this this bit here um but yeah like these legs need to look like you know they'd come out and they'd probably fold here and that mm. would kind of you know there'd be a little hinge there for it to kind of articulate and then there'd be another hinge there and like thinking about how all this could potentially kind of work and fold in these guys this kind of section of it will kind of fold up and go in there um it sounds a little bit kind of geeky and nerdy and maybe like you don't necessarily need to do that but I think like that's what makes good like droid or robot design is always something that's like, hey, that looks like it could work this way. Mm. And also just uh, a great um, kind of part of your practice as well, if you're wanting to lean more into concept art as well. So if yeah. you're doing illustration more for, you know, film, TV or games, having what you create actually be able to function is is really important because otherwise um exactly. when someone then in the prop department or um you know in any other department has to build the thing that you've made um and they realize wait that joint doesn't actually you know connect anywhere it's like basically um the first iteration of the you know the one minute bicycle sketch it's not gonna work let's be honest <laughs> um yeah nothing's going to connect to where it's supposed to but with practice uh, of both you know the line work and, and sort of the principles of drawing as well as how it would function you eventually get to uh, an actual functioning bicycle at the end of it hopefully yeah hopefully <laughs> um we do have another great question from mervyn um and it is one that we get a lot so uh it'll be interesting to see if if your answer has changed um but any specific reason to use photoshop and not illustrator is it just a preference oh, i never get that question <laughs> um, <laughs> just kidding yes i get that question a lot um it is personal preference absolutely um for what i'm doing right now which is just kind of sketching uh, illustrator is not really a sketching program it's a it's a finished piece kind of thing very clean um, if I was cleaning this up in that way, I would probably definitely consider using Illustrator um, for something like that. Um, but for definitely for this kind of like rough sketching or like kind of like if you want to get that kind of pencil drawing, like for instance, if I was using um, this brush here, which is that has like this one is the, the one that has this opacity shift depending on mm. the pressure. Yeah, the Illustrator transfer. doesn't do that. Illustrator mm. cannot do that. Um, it can't mess around with the opacity that way it can mess around with thickness and, and and pen pressure so a lot of people do do a lot of clean inking in illustrator and theoretically this this like cleaner black outline i could do in illustrator i totally could but i prefer working in photoshop um, and there's not necessarily any kind of logic to that aside from the fact that i feel more comfortable in photoshop mm. um and it feels more more like a drawing tool to me um but you'll see in a sec like i'll switch to illustrator now um, I've made all these kind of stickers in Illustrator that I maybe if we have time, we'll put on to this um, little droid later. So I do, you know, work a lot with Illustrator as well. It's a fantastic program for what it does. It's just not something that I think is optimal for what I like to do. Um, and at the end of the day, there's no kind of like, you just, you have to work in the program that you like to work in because mm. theoretically you're going to be spending a lot of time in it. Um, and if it's not something that you enjoy, then you're really not going to have a great time doing all this stuff. That is correct. Yeah. And especially if, you know, things go wrong or if you're trying to figure out something new in a new program, uh, it helps if you enjoy using uh, the program on, uh, on days where you don't have to 
quote unquote reinvent the wheel. Um, so yeah, Mervyn, it is it is preference, and it to an extent also depends on on the work, uh, the specific illustration work that you're doing as well. Whether you're doing you know logos or stickers, maybe Illustrator is is better. Um, for for that, just you can have those you know the vector vector stickers that you can then pop into Photoshop, which hopefully we'll have time to do uh, later in the stream, um, or things like that. I completely lost my train of thought because yeah. Flynn has said <laughs> that he's kind of hungry for rice now, and honestly, I, I am too. Uh, rice sounds great for lunch, so I think I might do that. But we... Ooh, sushi, yeah, maybe. Hmm. It's just um, giving me an idea, like make this guy a little little salmon nigiri kind of <gasps> robot guy. Yes, like that. That amazing. Cool. I love yeah. it. Um, all right, so I think we're kind of, we're pretty good here um, in that sense. Like the, the old me might spend a little bit more time kind of cleaning this up and probably the new me as well. But um, they're like, I used to really kind of fuss over these lines and make sure they're all clean and everything connects. And um, I kind of trying out different kinds of things and seeing how it all kind of works. But um, I think I'm good for especially for the purposes of the stream to move on to kind of coloring this. Um, so let me take this layer, this ground layer off. Um, and I've added a bunch of detail in here. I've added these little kind of like um, these things that you see kind of here yeah, on, the, on the legs there. Um, they're a very solid kind of visual reference or plating. I don't know if I have any examples in my references around here? Um, no, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, but what you see is this kind of like this idea that like it's been reinforced kind of plate mm -hmm. and you get this sense of like the dense in it. Yeah, like a like... jerry can, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty much, and then you got your handle, and that's a jerry can, um, and it just helps the thing kind of like maintain its structure. Um, so doing those kind of things uh, is always good. Um, these little kind of holes here is where probably his mouth is, so that's where the sound needs to come out. If there's sound, could also be these kind of like you know Darth Vadery kind of lines. Ooh, yeah. um, if we're doing that, um, depends on how much Star Wars we're kind of going. Um, but yeah, let's call this what it is and let's call this the outline and that is going to be my sketch and then smack a new layer on top of that and we'll call this calls which is my short for colors um, nice and we might even put that in a new group and call that calls and this guy base um, so yes. a good trick when you're doing this as well to kind of see what you're doing um, you've probably seen this with a lot of concept art is to just drop the um, lightness on my background layer to just like a neutral gray, like mm -hmm. this 50% gray. It just means that I'm gonna have like, for instance, if I wanna make some white on this and it's already on a white background, that's gonna be really tricky for me to see where the colors are going and how it looks. So giving it just kind of like a neutral background that I'm not really gonna use as a color um, is always a good thing. Um, another good tip for color here is if you're using white, don't use white. Um, and I hope that's clear and makes sense and I won't repeat it. Um, no, what, what I'm talking about here basically is the same, same thing kind of happens with black mm. is pure white and pure black doesn't really exist in real life. It's always a little bit kind of off and it doesn't have to be by much, uh, but you can see in my color picker here, what I've done is I've kind of just made this selection and I'll, I'll fill this with that color and I'll switch to white and you can kind of see like there is a very slight difference, but when you're kind of doing artwork like this, you always want to think about like, there's there's always a bit of color in light. That's what all light is. It's all color. Um, there's no such thing as white, like clean white light. So you want to give it a little bit of color. Same with your black. It's just, it's not going to be pure black. It's always going to be like super, super, super dark blue um, or like, you know, dark red or whatever, it just helps to give your drawing a little bit more kind of reality and personality. 
um, than just using black. For the outlines, you can stick with black, even though we might go full kind of painterly on this one and show you guys a little tip to kind of getting that painterly look rather than this um, very solid kind of comic book I think, which I love to do as well. Obviously, a big fan of like anime and manga, so I do a lot of that. But every now and then, it can be fun to just kind of work with um, these more kind of painterly outlines. So here we are. We've kind of filled out this base layer. Why I do a base layer is because using um, command and clicking on my thumbnail, I can do quick selections of that. So that's going to always going to be a good thing. Like if I need to do a big selection of something and grab the whole thing. I can just do that really quickly, and that's going to act as my base. Um, then I'm going to add in kind of um, second color. So call this one second color. Um, and this is where kind of like the decision needs to be made of, you know, what's, um, what's my inspiration here? So going back to my board, um, am I going kind of, am I trying to tell people this is a reference to R2? Mm. Um, so I'm going to use blue and white. Or am I trying to do something a little bit different, like this guy or like this little red and gray guy? I'm, I'm feeling this. I like the color scheme on this guy. Um, and I'm, so I'm going to kind of potentially even just color pick these colors in here and see how we go. Um, but again, you know, this, this can change and this probably will change as we're going along. So let's just begin with just some highlights and kind of details in here. So let's start with down here and we'll get this guy to get all colored up like this. Fantastic. Um, and just a heads up as well that we are over our halfway time. Um, I'm sure Flynn will remind me more specifically how much time we have left, but I would say closer to 20 minutes left. Yep um yeah so yeah so just continuing here and this is where you can also start you know it doesn't necessarily need to fit to to shapes like this and just kind of you know parts of the robot are certain colors and others not like you can have a little bit more fun than that and see you know does he have a little kind of stripe on the side here because he's got style and he's a cool robot <laughs> so he's got these little you know double stripe like that or now if you're trying to you know like make it really cool you can do this kind of like viper style kind of double horizontal line across the hood of the car kind of thing <laughs> and try and get this like racing robot uh, there's all kinds of things that we can you know mess around with here and see how all this goes but um another little tip here for you guys if you're um if you're kind of finding that you're gonna you know going over the lines a lot um, and all that you can set I can set my color layer and this is why it helps also to have this base layer I can set okay. this color layer to a clipping layer underneath to, to underneath that so how I do that is literally just hold down option or alt and you'll see this little icon come up as I hover in between the layers so I need to be like I'm holding it down now you probably can't see it but as I get close to the middle the join of the layers I get this little icon and if I click on that it goes this little thing and what happens then is if I paint over here, nothing happens. It's only when I come across of where there's information on this layer that I get paint. So it's a good way to make sure, like I've already done the work of staying clean on my base layer. I don't need to do it again on this color layer. Excellent, but yeah. You do need to know that if I turn off that clipping, all the drawings that I've done over <laughs> here will come back. So they're not gone, they're just clipped to the layer underneath it. But yeah. it's a nice little kind of easy way of like, again, work hard, not, no, not work smart, not hard, sorry. <laughs> um, losing my mind over here. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a good way to kind of, you know, do the clean line work, but not have to necessarily fuss too much over how it all works. Um, and I might put a layer underneath this guy. While also, you do that, yeah. uh, we do have a bit of a throwback uh, question to our stream earlier this week again from Mervyn. Mervyn, thank you so much for, ex for your excellent questions. And if anyone else uh, has questions, please feel free to, to pop them in the chat. But Mervyn's question is, uh, do you always take references before drawing or sometimes does an idea just pop up in your mind without even seeing any reference? Um, so 
yeah so the 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 reference and the inspiration are, are slightly different things so i i will sometimes just have an idea that comes up and i don't need to look at inspiration but reference um is a, is used in a slightly different way where like you want to look at something like for instance these legs or like the turbine that we looked at before like that i might not have done that before excuse me and so i need to look at how that works um the the most kind of like standard example of reference is hands every artist always struggles with drawing hands and so you need to go in and find that reference of hands so that you know how to draw it properly so that's something that i don't always do and when i don't i always regret it because it's just <laughs> it's so much easier and so much like faster and you do it a lot better if you just look at your reference um, and if you go and find some reference to to do the thing that you're trying to do you're always going to benefit from it and not you know try and try and try and get and like why is it not working it just doesn't look right um that can be incredibly frustrating so getting your reference and and you know not being sort of not trying to cut corners and and not looking at your reference um or looking you know at how something actually looks is potentially a, a huge mistake and a huge kind of time sink that's going to really cause issues later on so yeah i i don't necessarily always look at inspiration when i start sometimes I'll have an idea just right off the bat. Um, but reference is something that I try and try and time again to make sure that I look at because it just, yeah, everything kind of works a lot better with reference. It does, yes. I think it's definitely something that for me, you know, you don't, it's the sort of backwards and forwards of, oh, I don't want to rely on reference, but also relying on reference is how you create um you know accurate work so it's i i think people well i don't want to generalize but but it's easy to be like no i i can do it i don't need reference and and of course you always benefit from reference uh, i wouldn't say that you always desperately need it but it does benefit you immensely um mm. whether it is just okay i'm drawing a hand in a way that i've never drawn it before maybe I should look at reference or I'm drawing a material that I've never drawn before. Reference could potentially be good. Um, otherwise, you could maybe, you know, subconsciously mix it with, um, you know, actually do two poses in one and the perspective is all off or you just end yeah. up drawing material that isn't the material that you wanted to draw. So I think just being allowing reference to to happen when it needs to um uh, is important um and less maybe about being super strict about okay must happen before everything else but as soon as you feel like you need it just just embrace it and, and go look at some reference yeah absolutely I, I think there's nothing like for me at least there's nothing um glorious about managing to draw the thing without reference unless it's already in your brain like the more you draw it then you know you won't need reference as much or at all the next time you do but if you're trying to draw something for the first time and trying to get that angle right but actually like cracking it won't like it won't inscribe it in your brain as much mm. like you need to really look at properly at the thing that you're trying to do in order to get that Thing, then inscribe it to your brain so that next time you draw it you can just draw it from memory exactly. um, and that's always kind of tricky to do but yeah it's definitely something that you know don't be afraid to to kind of look at your reference and and you know figure out what's what's the best way to draw this and how have others drawn this before me as well like mm. that's why all these tutorials exist online to you know how to draw hands how to draw faces like use them yeah that's part of why we do what we do here as well um yep. you know it's to it's to help um and inform and inspire and all of the above uh i did also want to highlight deegan's comment uh as well which connects to um what you were saying before about the legs but also what we're talking about now which is you know the more you think about the mechanics or for example just the more you think about what you're going to do ahead of time, the easier time you have in the future drawing from different angles or, you know, drawing it again. So 
Mm. Yeah, preparation is is key. Absolutely. And I've just realized, for all you Aussies out there, that I've made this guy into Aussie sports colors. <laughs> which is purely incidental, um, but I'm kind of digging it. But again, like, you know, this is where I can go because all my colors are on separate layers. I can go in and try and see, like, what's what's kind of what's fitting here? What's maybe going to be a little bit kind of something that I wouldn't necessarily do Mm. Oh, Sweden! Standard, like, yeah. <laughs> For a second, yeah, with the blue and the yellow, get Sweden. I quite, I quite like this actually. I quite like the yeah. yellow. Um, that's pretty cool too. Again, like you know, I don't, don't get me started on this. I'll, I'll spend <laughs> days doing this. Um, but what I might do now is, um, I was going to add in just a few more little kind of bits and pieces of detail here just to kind of bring out some highlights. Mm. Uh, but I might start bringing in some of that, um, some of those stickers and mm. see how that kind of plays into this and Excellent. where we can kind of stick them. And then we'll put some shading on it as well. Um, Before you do that though, I know for, for anyone new to Photoshop or new to digital illustration, if you could just, uh, show us the trick you did to change the colors so easily. Oh, um, yeah, of course. Because I'm not sure if um, everyone will know how to do that. And make sure you're on your layer always. You know, Photoshop will only ever do what you tell it to. Mm -hmm. um, so if you're on the wrong layer, then obviously it's going to do the wrong thing. Um, so I'm on my yellow here. Um, and I might actually label that properly. Yellow, green. And what's this face? We'll call that face. Um, so I go to my yellow layer, Command or Control U brings up this little hue saturation menu. And then it's just a matter of kind of messing around with these sliders um, and, you know, saturation. If you desaturate it, it'll go to gray. If you saturate it to highest and then lightness and darkness will also mess around. So, yeah, I spend a lot of time on that menu kind of trying to figure out how all this should look. Saves you from having to recolor, even if it's just the paint bucket tool. Uh, this is just so much quicker um, yeah. to testing out colors without really having to, well, without having to do anything to your to your illustration at all. Mm. Uh, another little good tip here when you're doing this is like you get these what we call the marching ants, which is like when you make a selection, you get this stuff. Um, sometimes if you're trying to look at colors side by side, it can actually get in the way of how that looks. So if you do Command or Control H, which is hide, mm -hmm. it'll hide that selection, but it's still active. So now I can, you know, mess around with this and see ah. kind of how that looks. And it, it just gives me a bit of a clearer idea of like, how's that actually going to look in the end? And if I'm happy with it or not. Um, quite like that. Let's go with that. And then command hide again shows you your selection and then you can deselect and clean up your mess <laughs> a little bit. Um, all right, so let's get into like, I'd, I'd probably spend a little bit more time at this stage, like adding in like lights and things, but for the sake of kind of this tutorial, let's kind of move ahead a little bit um, mm -hmm. and add in some of these stickers. So, Go over to my Illustrator, um, and I've, I've made all these because I use kind of these stickers quite a lot, um, and I like to kind of mess around with all these different things. There's a lot of references for those who have seen Akira. You'll notice a lot of Akira references in here. Um, your basic kind of standard cyberpunky kind of things happening here. Um, so let's go in and give this guy a little radioactive sticker maybe. So let's grab this one. Um, and I can literally just do Command C for copy. And then I can go over to my Photoshop and just paste that straight in. Uh, and I want to paste that as a layer. Uh, sorry, no, I want to paste that as pixels um, because as you can see when I do that, it's actually saved, which is handy if you're trying to do that. It's saved all the layers that this thing has in Illustrator. So these three layers ah, in here. Wow. Um, so I don't actually want that this time around, but it, it can be a handy thing if you're going to think about editing that later on. Mm. So I actually want that as a uh, pixels. 
And is there a reason why go. you wouldn't uh, paste that in as a smart object? What uh, what would be the benefits or um, of that? Or you wouldn't do that. No real benefit at this stage. It's mostly just me um, working in this way to kind of um, figure out, you know, like just making the file not super heavy as well. Um, and for some reason as well, making doing that has made all my layers not clip anymore. Um, hmm, that's interesting. interesting. Um, what I can do is I can make my selection on the base. Um, that's why I've got that base selection. Mm -hmm. And then I can do Command Shift I, which will invert the selection. And then I can literally just go to every layer where there's stuff sticking out and just hit delete. And it will delete everything outside of that. That's, okay, again, that's yeah. where it's kind of super handy to have those that kind of base layer because it's just mm -hmm. a quick way of like making that selection without too much hassle. Um, so I've got I've now made a group with my layer in there um, and all the stickers in there. So let's stick that on here and we can start to mess around with perspectives and things. Um, so let's put that like on his side here is a little bit radioactive um <laughs> not necessarily as a warning that can start to go you know in, in different kind of places maybe it's is it just a sticker or is it just a functional thing of like trying to warn like hey this is this is nuclear power this bit here or is it just a sticker that's gonna kind of sit somewhere like here for instance i'm gonna put that there and then i'm gonna start to kind of squash it a little bit and then i can go up to here and that's going to give me this kind of like warp Ooh. thing, which will make it look like it's kind of on that curved surface mm. a little bit better. I'm yeah. kind of imagining just that it's because it's such a cute uh, droid or robot, right? That they kind of put the sticker on to appear more cool. Uh, yeah, like, you know, you put a sticker be. on your backpack or your laptop, whatever, and it has like radioactive or like acid or something like that. It's just trying yeah. to give it some street cred. Um, that's my theory anyway. <laughs> um, let's give him a destroy sticker as well because it's so cute. It's pretty ironic yes. that he would have a giant sticker that says destroy. <laughs> and maybe he's like, maybe he's actually the most like dangerous droid around. And like, if you mess with him, he'll really show you what for. Could be, could be. Uh, we do have about nine minutes left and we have a great question. Um, once again but it's it's kind of a um it's a, it's a big question it's a feelings mm -hmm. question i would say so let's um finish this up and if we have time we can we can get to this to this question after um yep. sounds good all right so yeah so just making that again just bending that to kind of make it look like it's sitting on that shape um, and yeah, we could, you know, we could keep going on with all these different um, stickers and keep adding and adding and adding. But what I want to do now is just add some quick um, shading into this and maybe some reference and some colors as well. So having all my colors on a separate layer is going to make it super easy for me to do what I always use to make shading. Um, and that is placing an adjustment layer, which is this guy down here. So this little circle kind of cut in half and going to my hue saturation panel. So the same panel that I had before in a slightly more condensed version and just making sure that I click this kind of clipping thing again, which is what we did earlier um, with that layer kind of looking at the clip. Um, and so that's just gonna make sure that it only affects that. And then I can just drop the darkness. I can boost the saturation and I'm gonna give it a little bit of color as well. So again, you know, your, your sh shading is never just add black to color because it's, mm. again, you know, there is no such thing as just black in the real world. So you want that little bit of color in there. Um, and then I can just fill that with black on a clipping mask because it comes with a clipping mask handy already. Um, and then I can just say, all right, cool. Let's, um, let's give this guy some shadows and lighting. Excellent. And there we go. Very, Boom. very easy. So the nice thing about this is obviously like if I come back into my colors here and I decide that I don't like this yellow anymore and I change it, then because it's being adjusted by the adjustment layer on top of it, all the shading will just switch to mm -hmm. the darker versions of the colors that I've used already. I quite like this pink. I'm going to go with this pink. <laughs> um, and you know what? I'm going to make 
these whites here, they're going to be my yellow. Oops. So similar and fill. Oh, whoops. Sorry. There we go. That's better. That's what I wanted. Um, so yeah, so there we go. We've got like basic shading and again, like lots more to do on here mm. to try and get, you know, all the shading to look the way that it should. Um, but just a kind of a basic work around for that. And then because I really love neons um, and because that's just where kind of I live, I will put on highlight here, which is my shorthand for highlights. And I will go in and pick a nice kind of different color that's not in here already. And just go to town with a little bounce light. And so bounce light is effectively just a light coming from another direction, which just adds a little bit of that kind of volume. So usually in this instance, I've got obviously the, the main kind of sunlight is, is coming from over here. So I want my bounce light to come from a different angle um, because it'll sit in those shadows. Mm -hmm. And it just adds a little bit of definition to all these shapes. Um, and, you know, it just makes it a little bit more kind of cyberpunky, neon kind of vibe. Um, makes it more is, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is where I like to live. Uh, but you can see immediately already that it's it's picking up on a lot of that detail mm. uh, and giving it a lot more kind of definition in there as well. So it's a really fun thing, I think, to, to kind of be able to do with this. Yeah. Um, and then to finish off, let us not forget that I need to give him a little shadow. So otherwise he's just kind of floating around, which is fine if I've given him jets, you know, like if mm. I've given him like a jet pack or those turbines that we did before, um, that's fine if he's just kind of floating in space. But I'm going to go to my ellipse tool and just do something like this and just fill that with black and then drop the opacity down. And then I might just go and colorize that. So give me a little bit of that kind of bluish color. And you can see immediately that that just, it goes from just like a flat thing to something that has a little bit more life and color. Mm, it um, exists in the world. Yeah. And then because he's a little manga dude, just quickly, <laughs> we're going to give him a little emotion thing Amazing. exclamation fantastic there you go. so cute absolutely That's adorable it. don't forget to save as well That's yes important. always save your work everyone <laughs> um but how about we actually if you zoom in uh in photoshop i will just really quickly hide our cameras Again, back. you know, there's there's a lot of stuff that I could do here. If I had more time, I'd probably start to look at um, giving him a little bit of wear and tear. So taking mm. this color and, you know, giving him quick little kind of bits of like scratches on the corners. Again, like paint usually comes off where the, the corners of things are. And that's how stuff works. Um, and then, you know, you can start kind of giving little bits of scratches in different places and giving them this wear and tear. And just makes him look like he's he's been around he's seen some stuff um that's up to you again like if you're depending on the star that you're going for um but yeah that's basically it as a little Fantastic. robot Fantastic. And rice that, cooker bot yeah rice cooker bot uh definitely gonna have sushi for lunch now um but that <laughs> does bring us to time uh or just about um thank you so much jeremy for joining us for our first sessions into illustration for this month um oh, i will pleasure. be posting the links in the chat but if you just want to say where on the internet people can find you um so you can find my work at jeremylord.com which is my main website um i've got a profile pro, uh, sorry oops behance profile um which is also jeremy lord and my instagram is at jeremy lord underscore so, Fantastic. Yeah, that's most of my work. Amazing. And I posted all those links in the chat as well. So, nice. 
that is the end for us. Thank you once again, and thank you everyone for tuning in. We will be back next week with uh, Lillian Damano for more illustration, this time in fresco. Uh, but without further ado, thank you once again for the last time. Uh, Jeremy, may the force be with you, and uh, <laughs> catch you next time. <laughs> Thanks for the question, guys, and, and pleasure to chat. See you. See you, everyone. Bye. Thank you.